There was once an old woman called Nelly. She lived by herself in a cottage about four miles away from Wem. Now, at one time, that cottage had been filled with her growing children, and with, of course, her husband. But now, like so many women, she was all alone. And like so many women, she had never lost the habit of hard work. She worked from morning till night, and what she enjoyed to do most of all when she was working was growing her vegetables, making jams, collecting honey, collecting eggs. She was a provider, and her store cupboard was always brimming full. Now the problem, of course, with a brimming store cupboard is that when you're a little old lady, you can't eat it all yourself. But that was no problem for Nelly. Oh no. Come market day each week, she would spread open her shawl, put all the surplus of her provisions into it, bundle it all together, pop that bundle on her back, and off she'd walk the four miles to Wem to the market. And once there, well, she'd set herself up on a trestle table and she'd start trading. She'd trade. She'd sell her cabbages. She'd sell her honey. She'd sell her elderflower champagne. Whatever it was that she got too much of, she would sell. And didn't she enjoy herself? At the end of the day, when all the provisions were gone, and in her place were a few coins in the palm of her hand, feeling very happy with herself, she'd go off to the nearest pub. She'd sit herself down in the corner, in front of a good strong pint of Wem Shandy. Not ale, I'm afraid. She wasn't that type of woman. No, a pint of Shandy would do her well. And she'd sit there and she'd sup at her pint and she'd drink in all the gossip, all the news, all the conversation from the town because this was the one day that she didn't spend all on her own. Now, come nine o'clock, she was brimful and she really desperately needed her bed. She was an old lady. She had an active life. But she didn't feel active enough to walk the four miles back to her cottage. Not alone, not along those dark, unlit country lanes. And there was absolutely no way she was going to give any of that hard-earned money over to the landlord for bed and breakfast. That wasn't her scene at all. Oh, no. Nelly took herself off to the graveyard at St. Peter and St. Paul's Church. She walked across the path through the graveyard and stopped just about halfway through. And there, some three foot away from the path, on the grass, was a little stone slab. It's still there today. You can go and see it for yourself. It's about as wide as an old lady is around the hips. And when it's an old lady like Nelly, that's quite some width, I tell you. And it's about as broad as an old lady is tall plus a little bit more. In each of the four corners, there's a stone pillar that comes to, well, knee height on a man, I'd say. And on top of those four stone pillars, there's another broad stone slab. And it was between those slabs, the one on the pillars, and the one on the ground, that Nellie made her bed for the night. It was pretty comfortable there too, nice and dry, both from the ground and any dew on the ground, and also from any rain or snow that the heavens might throw at her. She'd wrap herself up in her shawl, put a hand under her head for a pillow, tuck those few hard-earned coins into the pocket on the waistband of her skirt, and fall fast asleep. And there she'd stay until the following morning. Well, that used to happen most weeks. This one night that I'm talking about, Nellie was woken up suddenly at about 11 o'clock. Five young lads from Clive were making their way across that same path across the churchyard. But they weren't quite as quiet as she'd been. Oh, no. They'd been in the pubs all evening, and they were making the kind of row that only young men who spent the evening in the pub can make. They were talking they were arguing, they were bantering, they were passing the stone jugs of beer that they'd taken from that pub landlord just to keep them going on the way home, from one hand to the other, from one man to the next. And Nellie, well, she wasn't too pleased at being woken up. She was a wem woman, and I tell you, they're pretty fierce. 
she was all set to spring out from underneath the grave and confront them and tell them just what she thought about them disturbing her night, when she heard a name, the name of one of the young ladies in the parish, one of the young ladies who she was particularly interested in, and she thought, aha, now, this is the sort of news that you don't get in the pubs when I'm sitting down there. So she stayed, back in a hiding place, stayed there with her ears pricked listening to their talk, thinking, perhaps... I can get just a little bit more of this gossip. And in fact, she got more than she bargained for. Because those five young men, they settled themselves down on that topmost slab above where she was hiding. They settled themselves down and they gossiped and they talked quite freely. And Nelly, well, had it been day and not night, you would have seen her blushes. But it was interesting stuff. Until midnight... And just as the clock chimed on the church, one of the young men said to his friends, You know, we really shouldn't be sitting in a graveyard at midnight. Another one said, What, you're not afraid of any ghosts, are you? And he said, No, 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 of course not. It's just that it's a bit disrespectful, isn't it? Sitting here with my jug of ale, drinking away when all's dead around me. And his friend said to him, don't be silly. Let's just share the ale with them. And with that, he lowered his stone jug of ale down towards the ground. And Nelly, well, she just couldn't resist it. She put up her pale, bony hand and she took the jug from his. And they say that those five young men made it back to Clive, which has got to be four miles away, before their own church clock struck the quarter hour. I don't know if that's true or not, but I do know that Nelly told her tale around the town of Wem the following morning and had a few good free drinks on the strength of it.